today on Divorce Court. I'm here today at Divorce Court to try to figure out issues, discipline issues with my kids and anger issues with my girlfriend. What I dislike most about Barley would be how he isn't good with his money. Um, I feel like he doesn't put his priorities first. What irritates me most about Brittany is when we get in a fight, she calls my mother and I gotta hear it. What I want from Judge Chawler is to make him realize that he's in the wrong about some of the things because he feels like he's not. Um, so he can see he does need to change. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Bartley Doyle and Brittany Martin. The two of you have been together for eight years. You have three children together, five, four, and eight weeks, and another child that you co-parent. And you have one deep abiding issue, and it happens to be those children. You're worried about each other's parenting style. So, Mr. Doyle, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me what's going on over at your house? I'm really trying to come to agreement with my girlfriend on how to discipline my kids, because every time I do it, it's either too hard or I didn't do it in the right place, and that's World War III after that, so. So you want me to tell you where to come down on the issue? Who's right, who's wrong, which way to go? Pretty much. You spank the kids, right? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any concerns about how often and how hard you spank them? Yeah, when I, when I feel like I spank them too hard, I feel bad. Right. But... Let's m ask Miss Martin what's going on. Miss Martin, what's happening over at your house? So we argue about him spanking because when he spanks them, I feel like he does go a little overboard sometimes, not all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I say something about it, we, he, he's like, why are you telling me how to discipline my kids? You can't tell me how to discipline my kids. You know, there are kids. And I just feel like he can discipline them, but he should do it, you know, in the correct way. And I feel like spanking them maybe once or twice, a pop on the butt. Other than that, just don't spank them unless it's really necessary. So. Yeah. Have you two ever had, sat down and had a conversation about how you choose discipline? Uh, when nothing was at issue? Do you just talk about disciplining the kids when something goes bad? No, we've never sat down and actually discussed anything. I feel like if I try to discuss something with him, um, he tells me, why are you trying to start an argument? Why are you arguing with me? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything I do to communicate with him, it's an argument. One argument about the kids got so contentious, the police were called. Why don't you tell me about that? We'll, we'll yell really loud and our neighbors will hear us, so they'll come out, and our kids do see that. We don't want our kids to see that. We, we don't want them in that situation. Mr. Doyle, is there a lot of uh, yelling and arguing going on in your house? To be honest, yes, there is, from me. Uh, from you? Yeah. Oh, well, with ownership and, and, and insight, that's good. Do you want to change things at your house? I do, but it's, it's kind of hard when, when you got everybody in your business. Say, uh, that's... When you say everybody's in your business, who are you talking about? Family members. Mm -hmm. Now, coming on here is not going to help that. <laughs> I'm just, just putting that out there. <clears throat> um, what's family saying to you or to her about what's going on? I mean, they don't, they don't hear my part. They hear her part, and then that's it. It's, I get a thousand text messages from all kind of people, and it's just... Are you, are you over there? Telling your your family what's going on with your husband, with, uh, with Mr. Doyle here? Yes, because when I tried to speak to him about it, he shuts me out. I feel like he shuts me off all the time. So I feel like I need to express myself to either one of my family members so they can understand me and what I'm dealing with, um, and hopefully they can talk to them, him so maybe he can get, get another insight so he can understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do go ahead and, you know, text a family member or call a family member. Are you a hard guy to talk to? But to me, it's like, why tell, why tell me to go discipline my kids? And as soon as I do it, I get cussed out when you can just go take care of it sometimes which every time it's time to discipline them, it's me. What'd I just say? Um. That's one of your problems right there. You get stuck on what you're thinking and your point that you want to get across, and you don't have a conversation. You're just getting your point across. That's why you guys can't talk. That's why, because women don't bottle well. If we feel something needs to be said, we're going to say it to somebody. Yeah. And it's best if we can say it to you. But if we can't, 
we're going to say it to somebody else. Do you understand what I'm telling you? So what I, I'm going to ask you again, this time I want you to answer the question that I ask. Are you a difficult dude to talk to? I guess you could say yes. So if I come at you and I don't agree about something and I tell you I don't like something you did, will, do you often resort to anger? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. If it's not in my favor, I guess. Yeah, you, 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 get, you get mad about it. Can, do you know how hard it is to live with a person that does that? Because two people in a house, they're going to disagree. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you see that as something you'd like to work on? Yes, I want to be able to come to agreement so we don't always have to fight about it. Right. Right. You know you're going to have to change, right? Yes, ma'am. I, I admit to having anger issues, so it just never took the next step, and I'm me going to counseling to fix it. Oh, we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? The one thing, I don't know everything I'm going to say to you at the end, but one thing for sure, we're going to get you into anger management, okay? Yes, ma'am. That's one thing for sure. Now I want to talk about the pressures of finances, employment, and lack thereof. Take your time. Do you know why the mother of your children burst into tears, not about the discipline, not about the arguing, but about the employment? Do you know why that happened? Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Martin, uh, I understand he's, he's had some difficulty with his... He had a CDL, he had some issues, and now he has employment issues. Why don't you tell me financially and uh, where your, your family currently stands? Um, so, right now, uh, we've been struggling for a little bit. Take your time. Sorry. Take your time. But when he works, he's a hard worker. Um, when he had a CDL, he did. He provided really well for us. Mm -hmm. he, he made sure, you know, our bills were paid and we were good. Uh, we had, you know, fun family times and we went out and did things together. Um, but unfortunately, he did have some tickets and he lost his CDL. It got suspended. Mm -hmm. It didn't get lost. Right. So he just got to pay the tickets off. When he gets a job, he does stay with it. But... I feel like the way he is at work towards his bosses, maybe that's why he doesn't stay long there. Mr. Mr. Doyle, since the CDL situation happened, have you had difficulty maintaining employment? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you know why your, the mother of your children burst into tears, not about the discipline, not about the arguing, but about the employment? Do you know why that happened? No, ma'am. This is my guess. You changed when you lost that CDL. You became angry. You're angry at yourself. And you feel a little bit less than because you were the man making money. And now that that's not happening anymore, that anger has welled up and spilled over and splashed all over your family. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. And you don't like it either. No, nope, because... Because it's bothering you right now. You, you care. It bothers you. That means you are somebody and you're about something. And it's just a matter of our getting your something together so your something doesn't hurt the people that you're with. I'm, I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to feel it. What's the worst thing that's happened since he's lost his employment? Um, so, we've lost our place. You know, we had to live with a family member for quite a while. And it's not always fun living with a family member. You have to, no. you know, provide by their roles and, you know, have to deal with living around their lifestyles. And it's just not something you want for your kids because you want your kids to have their own place. So, losing our place and then having to come back on our feet and getting our own place again was really hard. You know, um, and then for, like I said, he's been bouncing jobs to jobs, so I felt like I 
was paying the bills by myself at times. I mean, which he's done it when I was a stay-at-home mom. Right. But when you're pregnant and you're worried about your bills by yourself, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. So. The issues that you have currently at, at, at your job, do you think it's basically because of, because of your temper? It's mostly because of my anger and I left doing warehouse because of everybody trying to be the boss. And so that's why I got my CDL. And because my whole family does it, that's another reason why I got mm -hmm. it. And, you know. But some people do better in that environment. Some people just do better working for themselves. My husband can't work for anybody. He has to work for himself. And you that's, know. that's how I feel. And then me going, doing warehouse jobs is I, my background. I've got gotcha. you. I got to, it's a, it's a step down that you don't want to take. And it's, it, and it's a blow to the ego every time you walk in that door. And I the get pay. It. Underpaid, overworked, got it. Ms. Martin, not only are you upset about his anger issues and the finances, you believe he's cheating. And I want to talk to you about that. You don't remember a couple of days ago, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Doyle, that you, you, you popped out at 2 a.m.? I do remember, and I know what I was doing. <laughs> Would you ever share your frustrations about your spouse with a close family member? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Ms. Martin, why do you believe Mr. Doyle is cheating? I mean, I don't know if he's cheating now. Um, if, if, you know, in the past, he's cheated. I've caught him cheating, you know, quite mm -hmm. a few times, but... Quite a few. Quite a few. Not just once, not just twice. So recently he just done this where he'll leave at night when I'm asleep, like two o'clock in the morning, and I'll wake up and he's not there. And I'm just, it hurts my feelings because I'm wondering where he's at. What's then, he doing? What's okay. he doing? Who is he with? You know, I'm here with your kids sleeping and you're out doing whatever. It's just, it's not fair to my feelings. I feel like he don't see, he don't respect me. Mr. Doyle, are you are you showing up missing at 2 a.m.? Uh, that was my past. That, that was my past, and yes, I was. But you just did it, like, just recently. But Did you do it again just recently? No, I didn't do it. It's been so... So you didn't? No. It's been so... How long ago did you say he did it? Like, in a, just, like, a couple days ago. <laughs> you don't remember a couple days ago, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Doyle, that you, you, you popped out? at 2 a.m.? I do remember, and I know what I was doing. <laughs> uh, what but were you doing? I wasn't cheating. I was trying to make money. It's, yeah. I'm trying to... But, but, then but he... you didn't hear... But see, you don't pay attention. I asked you, did you turn up missing at 2? I didn't say, were yeah. you cheating at yes, 2? But you said that didn't happen because you didn't answer my question. You answered the question you thought I was going to get to next. You with me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you got it. You know, th the most valuable thing that you can have in any relationship is the ability to hear what's said. Not hear what you, what you, you fear or, or what's gonna make you angry, but hear exactly what's being said. And I don't think you do. I don't think you do. Um, you also say that he compares you to women that he believes are sexier? No, he don't compare me. I just feel like, you know, there are certain family members of mine that post provocative, provocative, you know, photos of uh -huh. himself on social media. And I just feel like he should respect me enough when I say, please don't have them on that social media account, that he should not have them. I just uh -huh. feel like he should have, respect my boundaries. And he doesn't. And when I do bring it up, he says I'm arguing. It's always an argument with him when I try to discuss something. Mr. Doyle, do you have anything to say about that? Uh... Yes, because, I mean... He thinks I, it's just a bathing suit. It's I, bothering your wife. If I deleted the person and they add me again and she known about it and then you want to get mad about it when we fight and bring it up and say, I want you to delete it, only when you're mad at me. Mm -hmm. I get tired it, of arguing with him, so I give up. I gave up on a lot of things with him. Like, I stopped going through his phone. I don't care. I stopped caring about who he's talked to, what he's doing behind my back. But it still bothers me. It still hurts my feelings. But you just but let it go sometimes, because yes, it's too much. Because 
I tell him something and nothing changes. Does it still hurt my feelings? Yes. yes. It does. It really does. And sometimes when something else happens, all of that just floods to the gate because exactly. you've been holding it for that long. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you understand what she's saying, Mr. Yes. Doyle? And it, that's true. When, once this argument start, just everything adds up and it all goes together. But right, right. cheating, I haven't done that. In, you haven't done anything. Been, you've been, you've been, you've... I'm too worried about coming up, coming, being success, successful, uh -huh. and getting my things together to support my family. That's what only thing I'm worried about. I right got now. you. But you don't give I'll... me any reason to trust you either. Well, I got you. I know what's happening here. I know what's happening here, and I'm gonna make some suggestions, definitive ones. What would you do if your partner's temper caused them to lose multiple jobs? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I like you, Mr. Doyle. I think what's happened to your license and your ability to provide has implicated your ego and made you just awful to live with. And I know you don't feel good, and I know it's, it, it's eating at you, but I want you to look at it like a numbers problem. All you got to do is get to the number of tickets. Every day when you go into whatever job, you put whatever into the, to the I'm going to pay these tickets bucket. And every day that you keep that job and you don't yell at your boss and you put more money into that, I'm gonna get a CDL, my CDL back. That's the fight that you fight. You don't fight the feeling of I'm being disrespected. It's like, I'm not gonna let that guy anger me out of another $25 toward them tickets that I gotta pay. That's the hard target that you've got to hit. And in the meantime, while you're trying to hit that individual hard target, A, Go to anger counseling, because I'm telling you, you don't have the right to, to create tornadoes in your children's heads. Quit spanking the children because you're not in the right frame of mind. You're dealing with anger about your situation. You know, if you're not in the right frame of mind, you will hurt them. Don't spank them at all. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I love how you put a period on chasing your pain about how you don't go into his phone anymore and how you don't, because there's so much you on your plate that you're trying to stay sane and reasonable. Rest assured, this man loves you. He just ain't got his act together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So always remember that. He loves you. You have the right to be joyful. Do something that makes you happy, and you have to facilitate that. If she needs an hour every way, you know, when I was going through a thing, the woman who taught me tennis saved my marriage, my life, my kids, because I could whack that ball an hour every other day. She needs to whack a ball or two. <laughs> and you need to keep the kids while she's whacking the ball, but you can't whack the kids. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. I think you're a good dude, but remember, you're working towards the jar on yep. that money. Yep. You're not fighting failure, you're just fighting that number. You with me? Yes, ma'am. Good luck to the both of you. This matter is adjourned. Are you serious about getting help and you're actually gonna leave here today and make sure that you know you go ahead and seek that? Oh yeah, I'm real serious about it because like I said, I wanna make it happen. I've been with it eight years, so that's my goal and my kids too. So do you believe him when he says that? Um, I would believe it when I see it. Actions speak louder than words.